Hello, Haunted Family. Welcome back to another episode. Okay, so, little known fact about me, I'm terrified of bridges. Um, I actually like to blame the Silver Bridge collapse, which happened before I was born. But, I mean, honestly, I just, I don't know, bridges, just, they freak me out. Um, and as you know, Silver Bridge collapse is in the whole cryptid world, is linked to Mothman. I'll let you fill in your own conclusions there. But I'm also fascinated by bridges and, you know, the folklore and ghost stories that are connected to bridges. One of my favorite places to visit when I'm in the Gettysburg area is Saks Bridge, which is long been reported as haunted. I actually was once thought to be a ghost by some amateur armchair ghost hunters at Saks Bridge. That was funny. It happens, I guess. So sit back, enjoy the show. If you like what you hear, give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Story 1. Collings Bridge I've been to this bridge on about six different occasions. It's a covered bridge, out in the middle of nowhere. It's just where the road forks. Due to the lack of streetlights, you must pay attention to what's in front of you and behind you. If a car comes up and you are in the bridge with your lights off, it cannot see you. And you may get hit. When I go to the bridge, I usually go around midnight. One of my aunts and uncles' experience at the bridge provided some scary physical signs of the paranormal. They took themselves and two friends to the bridge. They drove a white, full-size van with leather interior. They got there, turned off the lights, honked three times, and waited. They said you could see little movements, shadows, moving around but nothing major. When you go, everyone should stay quiet, as quiet as possible, so you can listen for the footsteps and the creaks. Some of the sounds in the beginning may just be from the bridge settling. After they sat in the van for about a half an hour, in silence, they all felt as if somebody had gotten on the back passenger side of the bumper and jumped. The leather in the van would make a squeaky noise if someone inside the van moved. There was no squeak. That was about the most major thing that happened to them at the bridge. They left, pulled into a gas station a few miles up the road to check the van to see if anything had happened. There was a tiny handprint caked in mud near the gas tank cover on the passenger side. My uncle put his hand next to it, and when he pulled his hand away, the handprint added more dust to the van. So whoever touched it had wet hands at the time. When they got home, they put their daughter's hand up to compare it for size, thinking maybe she had touched it, and her hand was double the size of the handprint on the van. I've gone and personally had weird, nauseating sensations. You almost feel like you're dizzy. You don't quite feel all there. That could just be me sucking myself into the feelings. We put a bobblehead on the dash to see any movements occurring, but it rarely moved. However, on my second to last visit, we had something freaky happen. My aunt was driving us there. There were four of us. We heard what sounded like deep footsteps. There was little dark shadow. My aunt and Sip's sister claimed to see Bob behind the tailgate of the truck, which makes sense if a little girl had died. This is the really scary part. You're supposed to hold your keys in your hand because the little girl likes to play tricks on you by hiding your keys. When you start up your truck, the engine will start to turn over. A second afterwards, the dash lights, then the stereo lights up. Mind you, this all happens in like three seconds. We're sitting in the truck. All of a sudden, the stereo light comes on. The dash lights up. The engine turns on. My aunt peels out of the bridge. And my uncle's like, what are you doing? My aunt's hands are shaking. and She says, I didn't start the truck. She claimed she was cupping the keys in her hand. When the stereo lit up, she let go. After she let go of the keys, that's when the truck started. Instinctively, she threw it into drive and left. The last time we went, my uncle and I got cocky. We decided to lie in the bed of the truck. Outside, in the bridge. We went into the bridge and didn't speak to each other, until we had left. While we were laying there, we put a bobblehead up on the tailgate. It only moved very, very slightly. 
The worst part of the entire experience was that, upon talking about it afterwards, we had both heard voices. I couldn't make out what it was, or what they were saying, but it sounded like an old man's harsh voice. Then a little girl would whimper, or let out a faint cry. Then a dog would bark. But it was all so faint. This really scared me. The story of the bridge is that the little girl was left to swim in the creek with her dog, and an older man came up and murdered her. I hadn't discussed what I'd heard with my uncle until after we left the bridge, and he was the one who mentioned hearing it. We both heard the same things. Really freaky stuff. I've heard of other people having experiences there, too. One guy drove in, got spooked, so he turned his car on, threw on his lights, and floated off the bridge. He hit something that looked like a tall man, a shadowy figure. He, being the brave soul, got out to check, and there was a huge dent in the hood of his car, but there was no one around. He filed a police report, but nothing ever came of it because, well, I mean, he didn't hit anything. At least nothing that the police could find. I heard someone else went in, and when they left, they went to the gas station too. And their entire car had been keyed. They also filed a police report. You definitely would have seen it if someone was close enough to key your car while you were sitting on the bridge. Story 2. Witch's Bridge It was the end of March, and a group of ten of us headed out hoping to experience something paranormal, but actually figured it was probably an urban legend, and nothing would happen. Boy, were we wrong. We went to the bridge twice. The first time, we got on the bridge and took photos and video. We had two cars. Our first car went across the bridge, and we sat and waited for the other car to get across. As we were waiting, I looked to my right at the bridge, and this huge flowing white thing flew up from under the bridge. I said, oh lord, what was that? Everyone said what, and looked towards the bridge, and up the huge flowing white thing flew again. I was so thankful that it happened again, and that I was not the only one to see it. When I started across the bridge, just as we got to the other side of the bridge, this huge black thing flew up from the ground beside my van. This time, only my niece and I saw it. We went on to explore other places, but we were drawn back to the bridge. A couple of us were extremely nervous about going back. It was almost like a feeling of doom. We did not have that feeling the first time but it was very strong the second time. Some of the people in our party, not me, got out this night and laid on the bridge. Looking through the slats of the bridge, you could see something swinging from side to side. And the bridge was actually moving ever so slightly. We had a video camera and a regular flash camera. The video camera's battery went dead almost as soon as we got on the bridge. They walked back to the car, turned the camera back on, and the battery had full power again. We did not feel safe having someone hanging over the bridge, so instead they hooked a rope to the camera and sent it over the side of the bridge. That night seemed pretty uneventful until we got back to our room and started watching the video. We saw this huge white orb-shaped bright light that totally covered the van crossing the bridge. You could not tell that there was even a vehicle there. This light was there until my van got across the bridge. Also, the whole section of them laying on the bridge, videotaping, the swinging thing, underneath the bridge, was totally gone. The video was not there. When I got home and developed all the film, I was in awe. There were pictures of a perfect, formed witch in several different shots. In the corner of one of the pictures was a big-headed bat, or a cat, maybe, not sure which, with some other animal next to it. It was freaky and wonderful at the same time. We never expected to see anything, but certainly got more than we bargained for. It was definitely a not to remember. Story 3. Crybaby Bridge As a kid, we used to frequent this place looking for ghosts. There was always some sort of story about the Crybaby Bridge. But there is also a cemetery that can only be accessed by that road that went over Crybaby Bridge. The cemetery has been vandalized several times, and the rumor about 15 years ago was that devil worshippers held rituals in that cemetery. My friend and I would always venture out to the bridge during the day because, frankly, 
We were both girls and both chicken. One night, we decided to go down to check things out. Now, every single time we would go down there during the day, our vehicle ran smoothly, would always start, and always run perfectly. The one night we went down there to see the bridge, we started getting a really weird feeling. Then, all of a sudden, the lights on my friend's truck went out. We were scared to death. We turned around, and as soon as we headed out of there, her lights came back on. Her mechanic checked her lights, and there wasn't anything electrical wrong with them, or anything else for that matter, and she never had problems since. Needless to say, we stick to visiting during the daytime from now on. They tore to the bridge down several years later, so there's no access to the cemetery, 